It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hi, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. We're on location. Woo! We're out at one of the gardens that I do out in Medina. And what we're going to do today is we're going to be mending the soil. I've got my trenches dug up here already. And I did that about a week or so ago. Now we're going to put in the soil because out here it's very clay soil. There's hardly any nutrients at all whatsoever for the plants to absorb and grow into. So we need to put in what our plants are going to be taking out. So I have one bag of compost, which is manure. And that goes in to the wheelbarrow. And this is very simple to do. You can do this type of uh, combination for all your planters too. It works out fabulously. Compost is rich in nitrogen. That's going to make the plants green and grow and get bigger and larger. When we go to fertilize, in the summertime, after they start blooming, then I use a phosphate fertilizer, which activates the bloom and makes it larger and much prettier and more colorful. But remember though, don't use your phosphate fertilizer on your greens, like hostas or uh, elephant ears, stuff like that, because the phosphate's going to burn them. You want more nitrogen for them, so more manure in with those other plants. It works out the best. So what I have is one bag of compost, the cow manure, and second bag here, this is just plain old topsoil. We're going to mix this together, and this will give us a nice rich soil for our bulbs. And then on top of this, I got peat moss, and you just pour some of this in. And what you're approximately doing is Measurement wise, you want like about a third compost, a third topsoil, and a third of peat moss, or sphagnum moss works good too. What that does is that the moss is going to take and absorb the water and keep your plants watered longer. They won't dry out as well. And you can put those polymers in too, those little beads that absorb water into your containers. But make sure now, if you mix those in with these now, that they've been pre-soaked in water because when you put them in dry and you put them in your containers and then you go to water the containers, those polymers will expand with the water in it and then your dirt will get pushed out of the container and you have it all over your floor, all over <laughs> your patio or wherever you happen to have your container. So those little plastic polymers, those little rubbery things that absorb the water, you want to put those in a bowl, water them first until all the water is absorbed. Then mix those in with your mix. And then all we have to do is just toss this together like a salad. <laughs> Callie Allie ain't here. She's home napping. <laughs> she can't come out to the woods. Even though it's North Woods, there's too many critters out here. And I don't want her out here because she might stir up a skunk or get in a fight with a woodchuck or go chase the deer. And I'll never see her again. <laughs> Even though there's a fence around here, you just, you just I just don't want to trust her around here because she'll take off when she's loose. When we get back home we're going to do some cooking and baking and uh, Cali Alley will be back into the picture. Now this is the estate that I'm at here in Medina and this is where I started gardening two years ago and last year was the second year and this is my third year and every year it gets bigger and brighter and more beautiful. And I can't wait for this year because we got so many more colors to show you. And as things are blooming, we'll come back here periodically and show you the progression of the garden in bloom. Now this is a trench I dug up along the railings here in front. And this is where I'm going to be planting a lot of annuals along this trench here. And so with my compost, 
and my dirt mixture here all mixed together. I'm just going to take and fill in this trench here now. Because as you can tell, there's a lot of gravel and clay in this mixture. So there's not much nutrients, so I have to put in the soil in order for the plants to grow good. And we'll just take and go along the trench here and plant this in. And then come usually about Mother's Day or when the lilacs start to uh, bloom, that's the time to start planting. You want to wait till after the last frost, which is usually in May, usually about May 12th. But you never know around here in Minnesota. A couple weeks ago, we were in the 70s and 80s, 60s and 70s. <laughs> and now tomorrow was supposed to be getting uh, uh, two inches of snow. As you can see, I've got the trench that filled in here too. And this is along the third patio <clears throat> in the back. I got, so um, there's two trenches here. The back trench is going to be filled with cannas. And then the front trench, I believe I might put in patience because once the cannas get tall, it's going to block off all the sunlight. That's their dining area in the back. And it's off the kitchen. And on both sides of the stairwell, we have a herb gardens. So they can have fresh herbs for their dinners whenever they're cooking. Just come out to the patio and snip off a few of whatever they need. And this overlooks out into the woods. And come spring and summer, you can't see anything out there. Because <laughs> these woods are completely thick with all their leaves and brush. And you know, as you can see, I got my trenches along the second one here, second patio, and the third patio up there. And that's where they have a little warming fire. They sit at night and have a glass of wine or something with their friends and entertain. So I need to make sure that I get these gardens looking just exceptionally beautiful. This is where the whirlpool is. And on the back up here, there's a planter on the side of the house. And I already got the dirt transformed in there, turned over. And as you can see, along the top here, I've got tulips all, already sprouting up. And pretty soon they'll be, in a couple of weeks, they'll be uh, blooming too. A lot of plants around here. And where these terraces are, um, we have clematises and they're deep dark purple. On that one there, and on the one over back and back over there, and they get to be just a showstopper, just beautiful. And I'm thinking of putting up hanging baskets along the top there this year too. And this is the front of the house coming in from the road. Uh, the road's out that direction. You drive in, and you come upon this round circular garden. You can tell my tulips are in bloom, or daffodils are in bloom already, and I got lots of others that are starting to grow. We got daffodils and hyacinths and alliums. A lot of things are kind of be coming up. There's catnip around here, and I got tons of lilies in there, and the peonies I got up here along the top. I got the cages in already, just waiting for them to sprout up. And then over here, we have another garden, and we got tons of tulips coming up here. There's lots of large alliums, gladiators, and we got the uh, bleeding hearts are coming up already. So this is really going to be pretty. And over here to the further left is their fountain in front of their living room window. That's their dining room area, and that fountain is beautiful. And in front of the window there. Last year I had a castor bean that was like 12 feet high onto the side. And I think this year I'm going to do a lot more impatience yeah, there. And along the border here too, I had uh, impatience last year and the year before I had coleus. Really pretty colored leaves. What's the matter? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? She's crying and whining because she got her twine in her mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, and welcome back to the show. 
Wow, boy, I, my tired. We went out to the uh, Garden One today, out at the um, in out in Medina, and it was fun. And I got everything all turned over and getting ready for the spring planting, but it's still cold out. And at the taping of the show, we're getting that two inches of snow in the morning. Oh my lord! So we need something warm to warm us up here. And this is going to be a great breakfast treat that you can make the night before, stick in the fridge, and when you get up in the morning for breakfast, just pop her in the oven and there you go. This is very similar to a strata, uh, to bread pudding. The way you're making it is very similar. But this is going to be a French toast casserole. Oh, something new. And this is so fun to make and easy. What I've got here is some leftover bread. I made up a lot of bread and I got leftovers before it molds. I want to get rid of it and just by myself or with my roommate, we can't eat all this bread that I make. I'm practicing for the fair, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I have some leftover cinnamon raisin bread. Oh, she can smell it. Look at her. She was napping all day long and I was out at the gardens. She can't go out to the gardens because then she'll get lost and go after the critters. Yeah, look at her. She knows, oh, she knows when there's food around. So anyway, this is leftover cinnamon raisin bread. And this is going to be excellent for this French toast casserole. And use up the whole thing, the butts and all. Because this is all going to get soaked up like a bread pudding. In fact, this is what I like to use for bread pudding too. Is like leftover um, cinnamon bread. That's excellent. And I made this from scratch and I got a first place on it last year at the Hennepin County Fair. And this is about half a loaf. And I'm going to cut this up into small cubes. Oh, about inch square, half inch square. You want to have some sesame. Now, you don't want to get too tiny because it will dissolve with all the liquids on it. And what I want to do, oh, crumbs, crumbs. We want to have about six cups of breadcrumbs. And we want it packed in, so just pack that in there. Oh, crumbs, crumbs, yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's see, that was that loaf. And then I got a loaf of white bread here, half a loaf. And you can use any kind of white bread you want. I, would, I wouldn't want to use the wheat or caraway rye or any, any of those savory breads. That's, that's not French toast. So if you have any leftover French bread or baguettes, I mean, white baguettes, not the herb. And I got white bread here, or cinnamon raisin bread, or just plain cinnamon bread. That all works good. You, or sourdough bread, plain. You basically want a sweeter bread. And when you make this into bread pudding, well then you add in all the sugar. And we're not going to put sugar in with this uh, French toast casserole because we don't want it that heavily sweet. We're not making pudding, we're making French toast. You're going to douse it with your syrup anyway, so we don't want to put on all that sugar. Okay, we got that all cut up into chunks. And next we're going to be putting in six eggs. So basically it's, uh, depending on the size you want to make, it's like one egg per one cup of bread. And we got six cups of bread. Remember I packed that in there because we want a lot in there. And remember also when you're cracking your eggs to crack them on your countertop and not on the edge of the bowl or cup because then you get eggshells into your product and we don't want that. Eat that right, Callies? Yeah, we don't want eggshells in our, in our toast. No, 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 no. She's watching good closely, waiting for something to fall. Oh, piece of white bread. Oh, the dog can't have the raisins. No, nope. not white bread though. Wait. Yeah. And we're going to mix this up. And of course, I got my immersion one. My, new, my toy, I love that. And we're going to add some milk to this. Let's see now. Because I want a little extra juice in there. And I don't want to thin it out too much. So I need to put in another egg so that we, we got seven eggs. Two cups of milk. 
Let's make it three cups of milk. And a half cup of heavy cream. That's going to help keep the moisture in it so it doesn't get all dried out. Hey, whoa, whoa. Make that sound, she knows I dropped something. Well, I didn't. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Of course, you can put in the imitation if you want to be at home, but if you were doing guests, I'd always would put pure in for my guests just to make it taste much, much better. Buzz her up. I'm gonna put in a little extra cinnamon because that bread wasn't too cinnamony. One more teaspoon of cinnamon. There we go. That's moisture now. Now, we're gonna put this in a casserole dish and I'm using a glass one just so it doesn't burn as easily or dry out as easily. I know it's the tin ones and these type of dishes, your estradas and your bakes and stuff like that and puddings, if you have a glass dish, they bake much better. Uh, tin one has a tendency to overheat them and dry them out. And so we got the oven going preheated at 325 now. Remember with glass containers you want to drop 25 degrees because they cook faster. So, pour all that right into the dish. Tap this around. Mmm. Crunch toast. And I sampled that and that tastes just right. I don't want all that sugar in there because we're not making bread pudding, we're making French toast. Now we'll stick this in the oven for 20-25 minutes and we'll check it to see when it's done. And it'll be done when you stick a butter knife in there and pull it out and it comes out clean where there's no custard sticking to the knife. So we'll put this in the oven, Callie. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. And this is our French toast casserole. As you tell, as you can tell, I told you when I made this, I didn't put sugar in it, so it's very, very low sugar. And I make, I use this sugar-free Mrs. Brotherworth since Uncle Roy is a diabetic. Whoa. I can eat more of this. See, it's nice and thick and full. It's still steaming. Ooh, and the butter is melting. Mmm. Oh, is that ever good, Callie? Oh, I bet you she's just a drooling too. Oh, there she is. <laughs>